It is the 24th day since Russia launched its offensive against Ukraine. Intense fighting continues across Ukraine as we speak. If you are joining us right now, this is where things stand at the moment. Russia has advanced its attacks on Ukrainian cities in a bid to increase pressure on President Volodymyr Zelensky. Heavy fighting continues in and around the capital, Kiev. Videos emerging from the city show smoke billowing after being hit by a Russian strike. Amid fighting, the mayor of Kiev visited a checkpoint on the outskirts of the city, where Ukrainian soldiers have built trenches to halt the possible advance of Russian troops. Ukrainian armed forces released footage it said showed soldiers patrolling in the Kiev region. The video showed destroyed military vehicles and a soldier carrying an unidentified missile. Now, the situation in Mariupol remains grim. Hundreds of people are feared trapped under rubble in a theater that was struck by Russian forces earlier this week. People evacuating the city recount their horrors and talk about dead bodies laying on the roads. Dozens of soldiers were killed in the southern city of Mykolaiv after Russia launched its attack on the Ukrainian military barracks. Around 200 troops were sleeping in the barracks when Russia attacked the site. Rescue operations are underway in the city. Officials say that over 50 bodies have been recovered from the location, a number that is expected to rise. Ukraine claims that a Russian commander was killed during fighting in the city of Kherson. As heavy fighting continues, Ukraine's President Zelensky has called on Russia to come to the negotiating table without delay. The West, meanwhile, is ramping up support for NATO allies in eastern Ukraine. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin held talks with the leader of Bulgaria, uh, of, uh, Bulgaria earlier today. Now, the two discussed the bolstering of NATO's eastern flank amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. While issuing joint remarks with the Bulgarian prime minister, Austin condemned Putin's war in Ukraine and called on him to end the conflict. The most the smartest thing that he could do right now is to make a decision to end this conflict. Uh, and, and uh, you know, he's uh, passed by a number of opportunities to uh, off-ramp, uh, de-escalate, and, uh, and try to settle this through negotiations. And we call upon him uh, to do so. Now, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said that it is vital that Putin fails in his invasion of Ukraine, highlighting that Putin's victory will be a green light for autocrats everywhere. This is a turning point for the world, and it's a moment of choice. It's a choice between freedom and oppression. And I know there are some around the world even in some Western governments who invoke what they call real politique and who say that we're better off making accommodations with tyranny. I have to say I believe they are profoundly wrong and that to try to renormalize relations with Putin after this, as we did in 2014, would be to make exactly the same mistake again. For more on this, we are on correspondent Anas Malik has sent us this report from Kiev. Listen in. 
well day 24 of the russian aggression on ukraine and uh, the residents of kiev are now slowly starting to get back to uh, their livelihood we've seen uh, grocery shops opening up uh, despite the fact that uh, the shelling or bombardment uh, or the aerial strikes on the city of kiev and its associated areas continue uh, we heard from the uh, ukrainian ministry of defense that said that it has uh, pushed back uh, the russian forces by about 70 70 kilometers uh, from the left side of the river bank uh, and but whereas in the north west is where they say that there is a problem that is ranging and they continue to fight over there this of course comes in the backdrop of the talks that continue uh, between the ukrainian government and the russian government uh, but those talks as yet have not had anything tangible out of it we saw uh, humanitarian corridors being offered again about 10 of them uh, and uh, uh, those humanitarian corridors that are mostly in the south of the city they continue as we speak unhindered Anas Malik in Kiev, Ukraine for Vion World is One We are now available in your country download the app now get all the news on the move